Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Maggie McMenamin, President of Union County College, and this is Inside the College. This month is Black History Month throughout this, the United States, and here in Union County and at Union County College, we have a lot of events and a lot of celebrations going on for this wonderful month. These events are, include educational, cultural, musical, and some culinary events. One of the major events on our Black History Month schedule at Union County College is uh, in partnership with the County of Union and the Board of Chosen Freeholders. They honor every year an individual in the community who has gone above and beyond in serving regular people and helping to make this world a better place. That award is called the Chester Holmes Humanitarian Award. And this year's honoree is none other than Assemblyman Jerry Green from Plainfield. This week we had an event here on campus for the Chester Holmes Humanitarian Award. And uh, we had multiple elected officials, public servants, community leaders, students, and members of our faculty and staff here on campus for that event. But let's take a look at some of the interviews that we had with Freeholder Linda Carter, Freeholder Chairman Bruce Bergen, and our honoree, the Honorable Assemblyman Jerry Green from Plainfield. Let's take a look. Welcome to Union County College. I'm Dr. Maggie McMenamin, President of the College, and this is Inside the College, our special presentation each month to give you information about what's happening at Union County College. It's Black History Month, and I have a special guest for us today, and that is Freeholder Linda Carter. Welcome, Freeholder Carter. Thanks for having me here today. We're delighted. Now we have, uh, we're here for an event on Black History Month, and I understand that one of the things uh, that's a component of this event is the Chester Holmes Humanitarian Award. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Chester Holm is a former freeholder um, who passed away a few years ago. And when we developed Black History Program back in 2013, what ended up happening is the fact that we said, listen, Chester Holmes, for his community service and what he did, he's a retired police officer out of Broadway and was on the freeholder board. And you know what, he gave so much of himself to the, not just Rawway, but to Union County. And we came up with the Chester Holmes Humanitarian Award. This year the Humanitarian Award is actually going to Assemblyman Jerry Green. Our uh, party leader in Union County Absolutely. and the uh, speaker pro tempore of the New Jersey Assembly? Yes, he is. And he has been our assemblyman. And, you know, when you look at the work he has done throughout not just Union County, but throughout the state of New Jersey, is amazing with the housing um, regulation legislation that he has put forth and also making sure and fighting that, you know what, we all have the necessary preservations and making sure that we have the tools we need here to really fight for our freedoms, but also, guess what, we have great quality of life. We do. I'm at Union County College. It's Black History Month. We are inside the college with freeholder Linda Carter. We're here for the Chester Holmes Humanitarian Award, and this year's award winner is none other than our assemblyman, Jerry Green. We'll be right back. It's Dr. McMenamin back again. We're at Union County College for our Black History Month event, and I'm joined by Freeholder Chairman Bruce Bergen. Freeholder Bergen, this year's award winner, Assemblyman Jerry Green. Talk to us about Jerry Green and his legacy in the county. I've had the honor of knowing and working with Jerry for more than 30 years, and he has always been a prime example of the best in Union County both in politics and in government. He's helped bring up younger people, teaching us the ropes, uh, spreading the word of what really needs to be done to help all of the people in Union County. Jerry continues to be a leader, both in the county and at the state level, and he's somebody who truly exemplifies the best of public service. We're here at Union County College honoring Assemblyman Jerry Green, humanitarian, great public servant, elected official, and a leader on issues that matter to the community. Housing, affordable housing, education, and health care. We'll be right back. 
Thank you. And I'm going to turn the microphone now over to Assemblyman Jerry Green, and congratulations. Thanks very much. Linda, you are awesome. <laughs> Dr. Mernan, would you like to stand, please? You know, we're so blessed to have her here in Union County. As usual, people stop by my office when they come into uh, Union County, no matter what the position happened to be. But uh, everything you said to me, you kept your word. You're gonna turn this into a first class campus and this is what you have done. And she could not have not done this without the students. And I wanna thank all of you for helping her succeed and the bottom line is that you got somebody you can go talk to, because that's what I needed when I was coming up. I'm just going to give you a little short history, if you don't mind. As I look out at the audience, born and raised here in Union County, was an athlete, but at the same time, born and raised in the community was 99% black. So you can imagine what it was at that particular time when we did not get the opportunity respect that we deserve. I've been very blessed because one side of me, being an athlete, the other side of me always just want to know what can I do to make a change? And I'm so happy to be able to be standing here knowing I have made a change, hoping that I can continuously be part of a change but that change has come, and I like to feel God has answered my prayer. Being involved in politics at an early age, meeting all the major players, Dr. King, Malcolm X, because of the fact back in the early 60s, this is when society was changing. I think this is going to be your generation. It's going to be the third major change. Early change was people who fought for freedom. In the early 30s, when people began to fight for their rights, and I saw it come to a head when it got violent, and finally the system recognized they had to make some changes. Those changes were just tokenism because it really didn't affect their community. It did not affect them. But I say to this generation today, you're going to face the most important changes in history because what you see going on in this election, only people who have been through what I've gone through can understand it. What you see out there today is that Middle-income whites are catching just as much heck as you are. So it's going to be more competition. Latina community is growing. All it does is put us all on the same even play, playing field. I recall being an athlete. We had just won the state relays, and everybody's it's four of us. All was four was black, and white coaches from all over the state was going up, coming up to us. I know you guys are going to college. I never even had a conversation about that. I always just wanted to get out of high school and get a job. That Monday, when I met with my advisor, that turned my life around. I said that uh, I think my skills can get me a scholarship. Can you talk to me about going to college? He said, who been playing with your head? You're not going to college. You're lucky if you get a job. Society is not ready for young black men. Well, let me tell you something. That was the most hurting time in my life. I practiced, I did everything you're supposed to do. Didn't smoke. To be able to get where I'm at today, at that particular time, and being told that that was the end of my ability to grow. I had a friend who couldn't handle it. So we were torn between becoming Black Panthers or just dealing with the society. 
And I don't know whether any of you guys believe in prayer, but the last hope that I had with my mom, she had a minister pray for me. And as he prayed, he told me what effect I'm gonna have on all my brothers and sisters and other people. He said, why don't you get involved in the system? Learn the system so you can make a difference. My friend decided to go to Black Panthers. He went up through the system. He died in prison. Today I'm standing here because of the prayer from God. And all I can say to you in closing, as I look out at every one of you, you're gonna get a golden opportunity in life. 50 years ago, people would have dreamed of having. Take advantage of it. Because of the fact you're gonna set the stage for another generation. It's gonna be here. You're gonna see this campaign they're gonna come after our votes like they never came before. It was nice to hear everyone would love to give me a cabinet position, but I love the position I'm in now. In fact, yesterday, Bonnie, uh, we uh, had election for new officers for the Black uh, Caucus, and I said, I got so many titles, I don't need another title. And here the young guys said, no, man, you gotta hang in there with us. So I'm sticking around again as the first vice chair again, just because the young people feel like people like Bonnie and I, we can't walk away from this. So again, in closing, from the bottom of my heart, I love all of you. But please, the three generations that I talked about, the price they paid for you to be in the position you are today, to be anything you want to be, proudest moment of my life was the fact that here in Plainfield, when we got the president elected, he got 15,000 votes in Plainfield. His opponent got 800 votes. So that shows you what you can do if you put your heart and soul into it. So again, I want to thank everyone who has said all the nice things about me today. Like I said before, I'm a blessed guy. In fact, my, my granddaughter just graduated. She's going to be a doctor. And she says, whatever I do, I'm going to keep my last name. So that baby, I'm going to get something out the deal. So again, I want to thank everybody for being here with me and being supportive. Thank you again. I'm Dr. Maggie McMenamin, back with Inside the College. And I'm here with our Black History Month Chet Holmes Humanitarian Award honoree, the great Assemblyman Jerry Green. Congratulations, Thanks Assemblyman very much. Green. I appreciate it. Well, you are just an inspiration to me personally and a great friend of the college. But tell me, what does this award mean to you? Well, it means a lot. I served as a freeholder. I uh, followed Chester's whole career. In fact, we both came from Roselle together. So I saw how much he put into his career, how much he put into the community and he became a freeholder. He's done so much for the community. Every year, people remind us of who he was, and that's so important. We're here at Union County College today for a Black History Month event where the freeholders have given the Chester Holmes Humanitarian Award to our Assemblyman, Jerry Green. We'll be right back. I've always wanted to go to college. That helps you evolve as a person. I just feel like that's my destiny. My name is Queen, and I am your dividend. Welcome back to Inside the College. I'm Dr. Maggie McMenamin, president of Union County College. You know, our mission is transforming our community one student at a time, and I love talking about our students. In previous shows, We've had a variety of students come in to talk about their work in student government or their commencement speeches or what they're majoring in and what their future plans are. Well, during Black History Month, and that's what we're celebrating this month, during Black History Month at Union County College, at one of the multiple events across the county, two Union County College students were speakers at those events and they were just spectacular. So we want to give you an inside view of those two speakers. 
One is McDaniel Gentis. McDaniel is the president of the Student Government Association at Union County College. And he's one of the student speakers we'll be showing to you. And the other student speaker is actually a graduate. He was the commencement speaker at the Union County College commencement ceremony at the Union County Performing Arts Center in Rahway earlier this year in January. And his name is Kevin Steele. Kevin just graduated from Union County College in January, and he's now a student at William Patterson University. These two students, excellent speakers, future leaders of not only our county and our state, but our nation, will give you an inside glimpse into the wonderful young people who are coming out of Union County and Union County College today. Let's listen in to their speeches. I would like to first thank the Union County Ch Board of Chosen Freeholders, officers of the college, and all organizers for today's fourth annual Black History Month celebration. I'm sure we've all come across arguments against the relevance and need for Black History Month. Such arguments often include that Black History Month is racist or racially divisive, despite the fact that Black History Month aims not to point blacks as superior to other groups, but to raise awareness. This history begins um, following Bacon's Rebellion in 1676, an armed uprising dissatisfied because of a number of political and economic concerns, consequently running the governor out of Jamestown. This nuanced involuntary servitude in colonial America for institutionalized racial slavery with this adopted the age-old political strategy of dividing and conquering those you wish to rule. Thus, colonial aristocrats turned the planter class of poor whites against poor blacks through the Virginia Codes of 1705. Its mission? To divide the two races from subsequent united uprisings. A mission, I would argue, worked way too well after a century from the abolishment of racial slavery. Black History Month provides a space to recognize those like Dr. Charles R. Drew, who discovered the technique of storing blood plasma and applied his expert knowledge to developing large-scale uh, blood banks early in World War II. This allowed medics to save thousands of lives of the Allied forces. Dr. Drew, as the most prominent black American in his field, protested against the practice of racial segregation and the donation of blood, as it lacked scientific foundation, and resigned, resigned, and his position with the American Red Cross for and maintained this policy until 1950. Just to repeat, racial segregation and the donation of blood until, the, until 1950. Black History Month is a space to recognize the two-day Tulsa race riot a large-scale racially motivated conflict involving a group of disgruntled racists burning to the ground the Greenwood District, otherwise known as the Black Wall Street, because it was the wealthiest black community in the United States. This riot and its impact is still felt today. When we look at the large wealth disparity and a lot of the money that has been concentrated at the top as a product of generational wealth, contextualizes why this riot was a large blow to the black community. Black History Month motivates research as this riot was only re recently recognized in the 21st century after being largely omitted from local and state histories. It was only after resurgence of push from historians and descendants of survivors, which led state legislation to establish some scholarships for the descendants, and in 2010, a memorial dedicated to uh, the survivors. Or perhaps we use uh, Black History Month as a space to look towards the political spectrum. And as the senator mentioned, uh, Thurgood Marshall. I'm not gonna go back into his history as he gave a pretty uh, extensive and proper uh, history. But the fact that he was able to stay persistent and continue on moving despite being uh, rejected because of his race uh, to the University of Maryland Law School because of his race he showed good faith and good character to 
uh, becoming a strong key strategist in the legal effort to end racial segregation throughout American society. And successfully arguing board, Brown versus board, and shifting the paradigm of race in America by legally overturning separate but equal, powerfully agreeing that student self-esteem was harmed by the mere fact of segregation. Marshall, in being a champion went on, uh, of the Constitution, went on to being the Supreme Court Justice. But unfortunately, despite the, seg the segregation of public education, our society is still ways to come from fully becoming integrated and a post-racial. Because again of this wealth, poverty is a great marginalizer. In turn, neighborhoods where the demographic makeup consists of minorities, more often than not, these communities are low income, under-resourced, rampant with gang activity, home to underperforming schools, violence, and the wounds of mass incarceration. incarceration. However, Black History Month serves as an instrument to combat against what perspires when you withhold education from a community. Education brings community, helps refurnish broken homes, by reminding minorities where we came and where we need to go. And this is why it's important to uphold in our college community this important fact even past uh, February. It helps us to pass in our community with the media sensationalized and model as success in our society, the surface level feeling of appearing to be somebody at, after you're on a reality TV show, or if you're a ball player, a rapper, because these allures are so appealing. This is at the expense of delayed gratification, which is self-actualized through careers supported in an amassment of knowledge. This consequence can be seen in the nationwide achievement gap between black students, particularly black males to their white counterparts. This was an issue made aware to me as a minority achievement committee scholar my junior and senior year of high school, which is why I passionately took today's opportunity to speak for, before you all today because this issue really concerns me. I'm enthused at the leadership of President McMiniman uh, that this issue in our college community has been acknowledged. And the college is actively pursuing uh, against the achievement gap. To adequately do so, we must remain committed as we are during the month of February in our celebration throughout the year. Thus, core curriculum events such as this one emphasizing learning, being open to difference, becoming champions of our roots and heritage, and therefore no longer being satisfied by standard history textbooks that are not inclusive of all peoples that helped build and sustain this country. Only then will there be a more hormon, hormon, harmonious, excuse me, harmonious cause culture exist, coexistence. Peace will ring exuberantly and we will actualize a post-racial society. Thank you. Good afternoon to all. Um, it's a pleasure to be here. Um, so, my name is Kevin Steele and I'm a Union County College graduate, which is an awesome achievement that I hope every student at this college will experience. I also had the privilege of speaking at my commencement ceremony this past January. This was something I never dreamed of doing, mostly because I didn't dare to dream that big. However, as we take a look back on the history of African Americans throughout this month, and hopefully throughout the year, we will see that it can take one dream to awaken a nation, a dream that may seem far-fetched in the moment, but later will prove to be the instrument used that will inspire every boy and girl to sing the song of freedom. As I stood on the stage that day, giving my speech in front of my peers, my professors, and my parents, I was also standing on the shoulders of the ones who dared to speak up and speak out against the injustices that were in our land. My speech wasn't directed towards the police brutality that is on the rise in our country. It wasn't directed towards the prejudices that still exist, whether they may be blatant or subtle, that prevent men and women of color from getting good jobs. It wasn't directed towards the young black males who have been taught that the only thing they're good for is being in a jail cell, living on the street, or sleeping in their graves. 
No, it wasn't directed towards none of these problems. But although none of these issues were my focus point, just having the opportunity to be there on that stage, speaking as an African-American male, I was able to address every one of those issues. And it made me realize that the greatest protest doesn't depend on how long you march or how loud you yell. But if the words that are being said don't spark a change, then we might as well go home. And not simply a change in those who are in authority, but a change in the very ones who are protesting. Even if you feel as if you aren't the best speaker and your voice will not be heard, your actions can say a whole lot. The success that we achieve as men and women of color is our greatest argument. When we walk on the stage to receive a diploma, we say that we are intelligent. When we, wake up in the, when we wake up early in the morning every day to go to work so that we can support ourselves and our families, we say that we are committed. When we take the time out of our day to lift up those who have fallen, we say that we care. What are you saying with your actions? It is true that there will never be another Martin Luther King Jr. But the reason why he fought so hard for our freedom wasn't so that the next generation could walk in the same shoes he walked in, but so that when his time was up, someone else who dared to dream could carry the mantle and pick up where he left off, even blazing their own trail. The countless and timeless stories of African Americans who made a difference all share a common theme, selfless hope. It is not hard for me to believe that most of them knew that they would die in their pursuit of liberty. I wonder if these thoughts occurred to them while they were in a dark and cold jail cell, far away from their loved ones. If so, what kept them going? Why did they keep fighting? The answer lies on the faces of their sons and daughters, and on their sons and daughters. It is one thing to have hope for your future, but it takes a different level of maturity to have hope for the future, as in the next generation. We should never take education lightly, or the fact that we can go eat or sit wherever we desire. Dr. King said in his high, I have a dream speech, that it would be fatal for the nation to overlook the urgency of the moment. I concur with Dr. King, but I will also venture to say that it would be fatal for the nation to overlook the sacrifices made by African Americans, and even the sacrifices of men and women who are not of color. Sacrifices that inspired people all over to leave the confinements of their homes, as well as the confinements of their minds, to contribute to a cause that was much greater than them. I am proud to be an African American. With this honor comes a great responsibility to make sure that those who participated in the civil rights movement did not fight in vain. This responsibility not only falls on my shoulders, but it falls on the shoulders of every citizen in the United States and every individual in the world. The minute we treat anyone of a different race unequally, we have just dropped the ball. As soon as we give up fighting for what we know is right, we have not upheld the standard that was set before us. And when we do not educate ourselves and others on the great achievements of African Americans in history, we are in a sense silencing a people who spoke words of hope in what seemed to be hopeless situations. You may have noticed that I mentioned Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. a few times. This is because he was one of the most influential leaders in the civil rights movement and is one of my greatest inspirations. His words not only impacted my life and his dreams not only opened my eyes, but the same was done in the lives of many others. We are already living his dream. So now, all I ask is that you keep dreaming so that one day someone else can live yours. Thank you. Welcome back to Inside the College. I'm Dr. Maggie McMenamin, president of Union County College. This month, our topic for Inside the College is Black History Month. And we've given you an inside glimpse into some of the activities that have been going on at Union County College to commemorate this wonderful month in our nation. We've uh, heard from Freeholder Chairman Bruce Bergen, Freeholder Linda Carter, uh, the Chester Holmes Humanitarian Award honoree, Assemblyman Jerry Green, and two wonderful Union County College students, McDaniel Gentis and Kevin Steele. Weren't they terrific? We're proud of our students. We're proud of the work we do in this county. And we're delighted to have terrific partners in the Union County Board of Chosen Freeholders. Our mission, transforming our community one student at a time with your help we'll fulfill that mission. Thank you for your support of Union County College, and we'll see you next month inside the college.